I see it's probably about to press speed. It's probably in the bonus game with a lot of pressure to tell. This is a meteorite. Yep, a freaking meteorite. This one was dug up in the northern part of Sweden about six years ago. And it had been in that soil since before the last ice age. Actually, it's been in the ground for more than four ice ages. One million years ago, it struck the ground. The whole sky was on fire then because thousands of fireballs made of iron was raining down because a huge asteroid entered our atmosphere 40,000 kilometers an hour, and it just broke up to tiny pieces, and it rained down on the ground. But how can we know this is really a meteorite? Well, in this kind of iron meteorite, it's actually pretty easy. You can just look at it. The pattern here that you see is called the Weinmann-Statten pattern. I'm sorry, German friends, the pronunciation might be a little bit off. It only forms when ridiculously hot iron nickel alloys are cooled down extremely slowly. And we're talking one degree Celsius per millennia. This super long process allowed octahedron shaped crystals to form. Uh, you know, the eight sided dice? It looks like that. You didn't play Dungeons and Dragons growing up? Here's a picture. And when you cut the meteorite into this two dimensional plane, it looks like crisscrossing patterns. This can't be reproduced in the lab. Uh, I mean, it can, but it's gonna take a really, really long time.
This meteorite came from a planetoid that was formed in the dense gas and dust cloud that was spinning around a newly formed star. That star we now call the Sun. And just like the Earth, it had a liquid core of iron and nickel, mostly. Early on, this planetoid had a collision with another asteroid, and that exposed the liquid core. And without the protective mantle, it slowly cooled down from the temperatures of space. One to two million years later, it had cooled down to under 300 degrees Celsius. And that happened 4,565.3 million years ago. And we know this with an accuracy of 0.002%. This is because lead, when it solidifies, creates these radioactive isotopes as well as normal lead. These isotopes are unstable because they're radioactive. So they start breaking down, but they do this very slowly. So by measuring the ratio of the different lead isotopes and cross-referencing that with a bunch of other dating techniques, you can get this kind of accuracy, which is crazy. In fact, it's one of the oldest formed solids in our solar system. It wasn't until 20 million years later that the Earth formed. Isn't that crazy? 20 million years older than the Earth. That's a long time. planet for 31 years now I'm 0.0000007 percent as old as this thing which is seven millionth of a percent as old as this thing is and I can touch it I can hold it in my hand and sometimes I get this crazy mind trip thinking about how old it is and where it came from I mean it's a freaking meteorite and it flew through space for four and a half billion years before it hit Sweden, of all places, and this random guy dug it up after it's been in the ground for a million years, and I bought it and made it into a ring. And it's really cool because I carry it with me everywhere. And when I meet someone that's even vaguely interested, I hand it to him and say, this thing is the oldest thing you will ever touch. It's 20 million years older than the Earth. And they go like, what? And I'm like, yeah. And then you tell them the whole story of where it came from. And it blows their freaking minds. Oh, it's so awesome. I'm so glad that I made this. And this one even has impurities in it that makes these round patterns, which looks amazing too. I'm so happy. So hit that thumbs up and send this video to someone that you think will uh, want a mind trip like Cray Cray. Subscribe while you're at it. 
Thank you very much. See you next time.